let's look at three scientific ideas and how they help us understand military history. These ideas have their origins in scientific thought, but if we understand their core premises at an abstract level, we can use them to understand the rules of any dynamic scenario, including military conflicts. First, we'll look at the second law of thermodynamics, which shows us that in natural processes, entropy is always increasing. Or, stated in an abstract way, systems without external input will grow more complex and disorderly over time until they enter a state of equilibrium. The law has its origins with C.D. Carnot, a French officer and scientist of the early 1800s, and was refined by Rudolf Clausius, a Prussian physicist of the mid 1800s. The law was developed to understand steam engines in the study of heat and energy, known as thermodynamics. One example of the second law in action would be energy lost in the rotation of gears. The first gear will rotate with more energy than the last gear due to friction, air resistance, and other factors. Another example will be a neat, orderly garden. It will only stay neat and orderly if it is well maintained. Otherwise, weeds, destructive insects, and natural differences between plants will make the garden more disorderly over time. For a final example of increasing entropy, let's look at the strategic bombing raids of World War II. If such an operation might be planned out as a neat, precise attack, factors such as weather, human error, and mechanical problems could all have a negative impact on the raid's effectiveness even before the enemy starts to act. Another scientific idea is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, the fact that we cannot know both the exact speed and location of a moving particle. This is the brainchild of Werner Heisenberg, a German physicist in the 1900s. While conducting a thought experiment, he realized that methods used to observe characteristics of subatomic particles would be the same as the effects he was trying to observe. The more certain he would be of a particle's speed, the less certain he would be of its location. Taken to the abstract, this idea means we can only have incomplete information in dynamic situations. Or taken further, we have an inherently limited capacity to engage with our environment. An example here would be testing one light bulb in one socket. If the light doesn't turn on, it could be a problem with the bulb, the circuit, or both. We will need to test other bulbs or other sockets to figure out where the problem is. Another example is information when driving a car. If you were to only look at your instruments, you know your speed, but have an unsafe mental model of the road. If you were to only look out your windows, you know your position relative to other cars, but wouldn't know your exact speed. You will need to keep your eyes on the road and on your instruments to drive effectively. Finally, an example from military history would be combined arms warfare, the use of complementary weapons overstress an enemy's capacity to react. By coordinating suppressing fire and a maneuver element, an attacking force is able to overwhelm dug in enemy positions. Our last idea is Girdle's incompleteness theorem, which tells us that we cannot prove the consistency of a system using that system. So that to comprehend something, we need outside information to provide context. This idea comes from Kurt Girdle, a mathematician and math prodigy of the 1900s from what is now the Czech Republic. His interest in provability led him to the conclusion that a mathematical system, such as arithmetic, cannot be used to prove its own validity. Taken to the abstract, this idea means we need outside context to comprehend things. Or, said another way, retired Marine Corps General Paul Van Riper once stated, there is no learning without context. A business example of a context-based system is the five whys method of problem solving. This idea aims to discover and fix the root cause of a problem instead of merely addressing a symptom or a symptom of a symptom. Another example is navigation based on a landmark. If we are trying to gain spatial awareness of a geographic area, such as a city, it helps have a point of reference to build our context around. If we know where a landmark is, we can navigate its streets. If we know our streets, we can navigate its neighborhood. If we know our neighborhood, we can navigate its district. If we know our district, we can navigate our city. Finally, an example from military history would be military history itself. If we want to understand military history, we must also understand political, scientific, economic, and other histories to really understand military history. Alternatively, we can use military history to contextualize developments in non-military history. These scientific ideas help us understand military history by outlining rules all dynamic situations follow. By understanding the abstract applications of the second law of thermodynamics, 
Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, and Gödel's incompleteness theorem to get a greater understanding of military history.